Jim, for those of us who have been flying both the fixed wing and rotorcraft uh, industries for a number of years, before we get into what you've done here, let's talk about some of the differentiations that need to be drawn between autopilot and stability augmentation systems developed for rotorcraft versus fixed wing. Uh, okay, Jim, I think that uh, first of all, stability augmentation systems are typically augmenters to the basic stability of the airplane or items to improve it that use servos that are installed inside the control system. Typically they're transparent to the pilot. They take out small perturbations caused by turbulence and so on, but the stick never moves and the pilot doesn't know what's happening. An autopilot, of course, in a helicopter is very, very much like an autopilot in a uh, PA-32, for instance, or an A-36. They move the controls with full authority. Uh, it, typically in a helicopter they both work together. When they do, the autopilot flies a more stable airplane because the SAS system, or SCAS, uh, operates very quickly and operates to stabilize the airplane to a higher level before the autopilot takes over and flies the normal functions. Now you've been developing an autopilot system, first for the Robinson R44, one of my favorite rotorcraft of all time, but that's a big job. At this point in time, I think particularly with the FAA, an autopilot is a very major certification effort, either through the TSO process and through the STC process. We started with an R44, which is a very popular small helicopter. That's a good helicopter, very reliable. They've delivered a lot of them. And we know from experience that there are some, a lot of people inquiring about autopilot. So it looked like a good market. However, the system we've designed is qualified and is being designed to qualify in a broad, broad range of airplanes. We're going to do the certification on the R44 but we have had airplanes offered to us like Bell 407s and so on. We have one project for a much, much larger helicopter in the works. Now, what is it that you're going to be bringing to the market? Let's talk about what's being offered and what the prognosis is for its availability, cost, certification, and so forth. Uh, well, I think one of the major things about our system, Jim, is the architecture of the system itself. The system was designed from the ground up to be like an airplane system in that you don't have to buy the whole system at once. You can back actually tailor your purchases of the various elements to fit your requirements at the time. It's very cost effective from that point of view. Additionally, it's a modern system. A lot of the competing autopilots in the industry are very good autopilots, but many of them were designed 30 years ago or longer. The difference in cost is significant between uh, older systems and new systems and newer systems that can use lower cost uh, rate sensing elements and so on and so forth. So a significant reduction in cost which helps our overall uh, concept if you would because we'd like to, we come from the airplane business. We'd like to see an autopilot in every helicopter. The only reasonable way to do that is to get the price down to where smaller helicopters can afford them. And the pilots can then get used to them and decide, like airplane pilots, geez, this thing is pretty nice. How do I get along without it? So that's where we're trying to go. Integra Release 9 sets a new standard with the easiest to use pilot interface in all of general aviation. Access to any of Release 9's powerful capabilities is as simple as pressing the desired bi-directional page key. Pressing the same key in a desired direction navigates to the clearly labeled tabs with no more guessing as to what a given pilot input would do. Avidine's Integra Release 9 is the next generation in fully integrated flight deck technology and the easiest to use page and tab user interface is just one of the many benefits designed to make your flying easier and safer. Can you talk a little bit about the way you're building your step-up autopilot system? Well, again, it goes back to the architecture. The whole system was designed to be put out as a simple system and gradually added to to get to the top. That same architecture, Jim, is involved in the basic certification of the system, which is interesting in that the certification model for the FAA certification for the TSO that's going on right now is actually for a Part 29 
uh, IFR helicopter. And uh, we're, we're the, the Robinson R-44, of course, is going to be a VFR approval. But you have to build that IFR capability into the basic system. The IFR approval now comes with an STC. But if the fundamentals aren't designed into the system, you can't do it at the STC level. Now, that built-in element as a part of the architecture has to do with subsystem independence between the force trim, the SAS, and the autopilot and all three axes and we have it all of them have their own processors they'll operate independently which also means they can be installed independently so that again reduces the price and provides a lot of flexibility for the uh, you know for the owner operator now another moment of freedom from Cirrus aircraft freedom through safety Perhaps the ultimate freedom is confidence, assurance, and peace of mind. We design it into every personal aircraft we build. It's the security that comes with knowing you're flying the plane with a parachute. The breakthrough concept that launched the Cirrus phenomenon. Uh, what are you targeting for the system? And we won't hold you to it uh, at this point. And when do you expect it to be available market-wise? Uh, good that you're not going to hold me to it precisely. Uh, we're still in the final throes of the, of the certification process now. But what we've targeted looks like we're going to be able to meet. And it is to have a, a force trim system for somewhere around $3,500. A SAS system with actuators and a SAS computer, all solid state, gyro sensing for something less than twenty grand. Uh, Two-axis autopilot, again with its own gyros and its own air data system, independent of everything else, that system should be less than $35,000. And those are the MSRP prices, by the way. A SAS and an autopilot combination will go up to about 50 if you just add the two of them together. Three-axis goes up to about 60, and those are all MSRPs. We're going to do all the STCs ourselves. You mentioned my background. Uh, the crew of people that, that we have that we're working with, our staff, a lot of them have worked together with me for a long time. We've done hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands, of STCs on airplanes, so we intend to do them ourselves. We'll have our own uh, approval authority down the road someplace. That'll help hold the cost down, too. And what's the timeline? I knew you'd ask. We can't give you an exact timeline because we can't get the FAA to respond to us in any time frame that we would appreciate. But we're looking uh, for the whole system uh, sometime this summer or late summer. We do have the TSO on the standalone SAS right now. We also have our manufacturing system approved, and uh, we're working the STC for that project right now. And it could be maybe 60 days or 90 days we'll have a, a low-cost SAS available for the R44. I'll tell you what, when you get that operator, you've got to call me and let me come out and play.